In this video, you will learn how to set up Proxy SQL using Ubuntu 22.04 server to load balance a MySQL cluster of multi-primary replication. This tutorial assumes that you already have MySQL set up. If you haven't done so, see the description below for the link on how to set up MySQL multi-primary group replication. The first step is to add Proxy SQL repository to the server. But before we can add the repository, we need to install a few packages. Since all the packages that we need are already installed, we can now proceed with adding the Proxy SQL repository. After adding the repository, we can now update and install Proxy SQL. Then we can now start the Proxy SQL service. After we verify that the service is running, we need to install the MySQL client package so that we can connect to the Proxy SQL admin interface using the MySQL client. The first time you start a new Proxy SQL installation, it uses a configuration file to initialize default values for all of its configuration variables. In this configuration file, we can see the default admin credentials. In this case, the username is admin and password is admin. But after initialization, Proxy SQL stores its configuration in a database which you can manage and modify via the MySQL client. To log into the Proxy SQL admin interface, we can connect to port 6032 on the local host and using the default credentials admin admin. Once login is successful, you should get the Proxy SQL shell. First thing to do is to change the admin account password by updating the admin credentials configuration variable in the global variables table. To update the admin password, we can use this statement. Just change the password in this statement to a strong password of your choice. This change won't take immediate effect because of how Proxy SQL's configuration system works. Proxy SQL uses multi-layer configuration system which consists of runtime, memory, and disk. Right now, the change we made is in memory. To put the change into effect, we have to copy the memory settings to the runtime layer, then save them to disk to make them persist. To apply the changes immediately to the administrative variables, we can use this command. When using this command, Proxy SQL reads the configuration changes made to administrative variables in memory and applies them without the need to restart the Proxy SQL service. Now we run this command to persistently save changes to the Proxy SQL configuration. This command ensures that any modifications made to administrative variables are preserved even if Proxy SQL is restarted. Now we can set up Proxy SQL with a group replication cluster. But before we proceed, let's get familiar with the definition of the MySQL group replication host groups table. The writer underscore host group is used to determine the host group that is responsible for handling write, such as insert, update, or delete queries for a particular server. The backup writer host group designates a host group to be used for backup servers typically used in failover scenarios or as hot spares in case one or more of the main servers become unavailable. While the reader host group column is used to specify the host group responsible for handling read queries such as select statements for a particular MySQL server. The offline host group is used to specify a host group that contains servers that are intentionally taken offline. Servers in this host group are considered temporarily unavailable and Proxy SQL does not route any queries to them. The active column is used to indicate whether a particular MySQL server is currently considered active or inactive. If the active column is set to 1, it means that Proxy SQL considers the corresponding MySQL server as active and eligible to handle queries. While if the active column is set to 0, it means that Proxy SQL considers the server as inactive. In this state, Proxy SQL will not direct any new queries to this server. This is useful in scenarios where you want to take a server out of service for maintenance or if the server is experiencing issues. Max Writers defines how many nodes can act as writers. When writer is also reader is set to 1, it means that the server designated as a writer can also handle read queries. This configuration provides flexibility in designing your MySQL backend infrastructure within Proxy SQL, allowing you to control whether specific servers can handle both write and read queries or only write queries. Max transactions behind sets the maximum allowed replication lag before a MySQL server is considered unhealthy. Now, to make Proxy SQL aware of our three MySQL nodes, we need to tell Proxy SQL how to distribute them across its host groups. 
Each host group is identified by a positive number. To set these identifiers, we need to create a new row with those variables and values in the MySQL group replication host groups configuration table. Here, we use two for the writer host group, four for the backup writer host group, three for the reader host group, and one for the offline host group. Additionally, we set active to one. Max writers to three, since we have three MySQL nodes. Writer is also reader is set to one. And max transactions behind sets to 100. Now that Proxy SQL knows how to distribute nodes across host groups, we can add our MySQL servers to the pool. To do so, we need to insert the host name and initial host group of each server into the MySQL servers table, which contains the list of servers Proxy SQL can interact with. Here, the identifier is two. This sets all of the nodes to be writers. MySQL1 is the host name of the first server. And 3306 sets the MySQL port. Now let's add the other two servers. And then, load these changes into runtime and save them to disk to put the changes into effect. Let's check the status of the backend MySQL servers by executing a select query against the MySQL servers table. All nodes are marked online. This indicates that all servers are available for handling queries. Next, we need to configure Proxy SQL to constantly monitor the MySQL server backends to identify the health status. To do that, it has to be able to connect to each server with a dedicated user. The user for monitoring the backends need to be created in MySQL and also configured in Proxy SQL. Because MySQL group replication is already running, these steps must be performed only on a single member of the group. Log into a server with one of the MySQL nodes and create the user. Then grant the user privileges to query the MySQL server's condition to the monitor user. Also the user needs permission to perform a schema to monitor replication group related tables. The user needs also replication client privilege to monitor replication lag. Finally, apply the changes. Next, we need to update proxy SQL with the information for that user so it can access the MySQL nodes. Next, we need to install additional SQL function that allow proxy SQL to query replication state. If we browse the documentation and scroll way down, we can see here the SQL statements we need to run to expose the necessary functions for proxy SQL to recognize group replication status. Let's copy these statements and paste into my SQL. This will add a view and its dependencies in sys schema. But this function has a bug when you select the newly created view. So we need to execute a new statements that will fix the error. Go to the GitHub of the proxy SQL creator and copy this MySQL statements and paste it to the MySQL prompt. So that fixed it. Proxy SQL based its monitoring from this extra functions and views. Back in the Proxy SQL admin interface, update the MySQL monitor variables to the username and password of the new account. Just like before, the configuration is not automatically applied, so migrate it into runtime and save to disk. This time, notice that we're using MySQL instead of admin to update these variables because we're modifying MySQL configuration variables. Once the configuration is active, we can verify the status of the MySQL backends in the monitor database tables. After configuring the health checks, the next step is to configure MySQL users. To allow access to the backend databases, we need to create a user account with the same credentials as Proxy SQL and grant that user the necessary privileges. For the purpose of this example, we are creating a MySQL user with no particular restrictions. This is not a good practice and the user should be configured with proper connection restrictions and privileges according to the setup and the application needs. Connect to one of the MySQL backends and create the user. And grant all privileges to this user. The final step is to allow connections to proxy SQL with the user we just created and pass those connections through to the backend nodes. To do so, we need to set configuration variables in the MySQL users table, which holds user credential information. In the proxy SQL interface, add the username, password, and default host group, which in this case, two, for the writer host group. Then, Load these changes into runtime and save them to disk. To verify that we can connect to the backend databases, open another terminal window and SSH to the proxy SQL server. 
Proxy SQL listens on port 6033 for incoming client connections. Let's try connecting to the backend database using lazy user and port 6033 while executing a simple statement to verify if Proxy SQL will connect to one of the nodes. According to our configuration, this query should be directed by Proxy SQL to one of the three nodes assigned to the writer host group. As we can see in the output, MySQL2 is the host name of one of the MySQL nodes. We can try to reconnect again, and every time we reconnect, we can see different results. This means that Proxy SQL is load balancing our connection on the three backend MySQL servers. We know Proxy SQL can fully use the database now, but what happens if a server fails? From the command line of one of the MySQL servers, stop the MySQL process to simulate a failure. We can check the status of the backend server in runtime MySQL servers table from the Proxy SQL administration interface. The node we stopped is now shunned, which means it's temporarily deemed inaccessible, so all traffic will be distributed across the two remaining online nodes. Now let's bring the node back up. Let's wait a moment, then we query the runtime MySQL servers table from the Proxy SQL administration interface again. Proxy SQL provides a web interface that provides statistics and backend MySQL servers information. The next procedures will enable this web interface. HTTP server is currently disabled by default. To enable, we need to set admin web enabled variable to true. Once HTTP server is enabled, you can point your browser to the IP or host name of your proxy SQL server and port 6080. You will then be prompted for credentials. The default username is stats and password is stats. Once you log in, a dashboard with generic information is displayed. From here, you can choose a category to get useful metrics on system statistics and MySQL connections. That's all for now. Drop me your feedback and comments below. If this video helped you in any way, please like share and subscribe. Thank you.